All right, good morning. As, uh, as you can see, uh, a little after 6 a.m. here in Grab All, Tennessee, the uh, sun has yet to completely rise. And so uh, I got a light, I turned it on, and uh, it was just real bright in my face. And uh, I was thinking maybe if you, if you watch uh, in this, at this time, maybe you'll get to see the sun kind of come up behind me. So it's not about what you can see so much as what we're uh, gathering around to hear and to uh, and to pay some attention to um, John chapter 12. John chapter 12 is where we are this morning. As mentioned last week, the story is getting very interesting. Uh, Jesus has resurrected Lazarus from the tomb, uh, prompting uh, many of uh, the the scribes, the Pharisees, the elders, the religious leaders um, to to really. Um, ramp up their their attempts to kill him and so um, that's what we're seeing here Jesus is making his way uh, to Jerusalem and uh, I'll just start reading chapter uh, 12 of the Gospel of John it says this Jesus therefore six days before the Passover remember when he will uh, gather with his apostles in that room and they'll eat that feast together therefore six days before the Passover came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And so they made him a supper there, and Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one of those recl re reclining at the table with him. And that just makes me smile to think about what Jesus has just done, uh, how he has uh, raised Lazarus from the dead, and here they are eating together. I wonder what their conversation was about. Mary took a pound of very expensive very costly perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume and so much to know about that um, I understand that to be this this uh, pure this this um, uh, perfume that was not watered down um, very costly we'll, we'll see uh, what it was worth here in just a minute but I just imagine um, just just the fragrance filling the entire house and definitely something that um, would have been smelled would have been recognizable in in even the days that are to come this this uh, this perfume would have been so fragrant and 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 and, and Jesus' feet having been anointed with them this is something that would have lingered and would have reminded them of this occasion and so the house was filled with the fragrance um, I've, I've, I've heard some wonderful lessons in regard to this that I can't help but think of just about how Mary uh, chose to to give something to Jesus that was so costly and um, uh, lessons that that often question uh, what what we're willing to pay what we're willing to 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 give up um, to glorify Jesus and so but Judas Iscariot one of his disciples who was intending to betray him to betray him said why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor people and there um, we have indication as to how much this perfume was worth 300 denarii about 300 days wages about you know almost a year's worth of wages there um, just um, just just really a, a, a special gift that Mary um, brought to Jesus but uh, Judas says you know why don't we sell it and give it to the poor now he said this though we get we get to see his motive here verse 6 now he said this not because he was concerned about the poor but because he was a thief, and as he had the money box, he used to pilfer what was put into it. Uh, tragic there. Therefore Jesus said, let her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. Um, this, this, um, that, the, the language there in the New American Standard confuses me a little bit, but when I look and check other translations, I see how um, this, this was this welcoming of Jesus' death, so to speak, his impending death, almost prophetic in her uh, anointing Jesus' feet, uh, something that would likely have been um, um, preserved until one and the family had died. Uh, this was likely, I've, I've heard before, maybe an inheritance gift that, that this family, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, had, yet, yet, yet she brought it and used it for Jesus, again, uh, indicating uh, what was about to happen. And so just a, just a beautiful scene here. Imagine, you know, the, the, the emotion and the love and the feelings that are just, just flooding this room, even more powerful than that fragrant aroma. Uh, just, just a really special scene here. 
Uh, Jesus says, look, for you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. It's interesting to me that he said that. Um, I've been doing a lot of Old Testament study, especially in the, in the prophets. This morning I'll speak of Amos here in just a, a few hours. And um, what I've noticed is just this constant uh, emphasis on not neglecting the poor, not neglecting the oppressed, and so it's interesting to me here that uh, Jesus indicates that the poor is something that, 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 that his followers will, in, in this life, on this earth, uh, will always be able to give attention to and should give attention to. Verse 9, the large crowd of the Jews then learned that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And again, um, large crowds were, were being attracted were attracted to Jesus at this point. His, his following has grown tremendously. But the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death also because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and, belie and believing in Jesus. Do you think Lazarus was uh, scared of, of, of that death? Likely he didn't want the pain of, of, of dying, but I have a feeling uh, having... Um, um, you know, the, the resurrection and the life, Jesus proved to him uh, death, had a, death had a different meaning to Lazarus. Verse 12, on the next day, the large crowd who had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branches and the palm trees and went out to meet him and began to shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord even the king of Israel. Just a most favorite scene of mine to try and recall. Hosanna, this, this word that means uh, save us or save us now, uh, indicating that, that, that the one that they identify as the Savior has come. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming seated on a donkey's colt, a prophecy, a prophecy rather fulfilled from Zechariah there. And just I love thinking about how different the kingdom of Jesus is as a, a king of this earth might parade in on a, on a, on a mighty stallion. You know, here, here comes Jesus um, entering his kingdom, if you will, on a donkey's colt. These things his disciples did not understand at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these were written of him and that they had done these things to him. I, uh, just this renewed interest in reading the prophecies of, of, of old and how they point to Jesus. And I, I like that verse, that indication there. So the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to testify about him. For this reason also the people went and met him because they heard that he had performed this sign. And so the Pharisees said to one another, listen to this, they said, you see that you are doing, that you are not doing any good. Look, the world has gone after him. They really measured their success on whether or not they were able to stop Jesus, stop anyone from elevating themselves above them. And uh, what, what, a, what a sad testament to who they were and how inward focused and uh, self-righteous they had become. Again, they said to one another, you see that you are doing, that you are not doing any good. They, they uh, again, uh, measured uh, their work as, as failing because they were unable to stop uh, the crowds from going after Jesus. Verse 20, now there were some Greeks among those who were going up to worship at the feast. This is really, really important, okay? There were some Greeks among those who were going up to worship at the feast. These then came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and began to ask him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Well, Philip came and told Andrew, Andrew and Philip came and told Jesus. And listen to what Jesus says. Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. You remember how often he would say, My time, my hour has not yet come. Now we have indication as to what he was waiting for. And it appears to me that what he was waiting for was, was for his name, his, his, his prominence to be known even outside of the Jewish world, even in the Gentile world. And so we see that here. When Greeks are finally hearing and coming and wanting to follow and, 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 and be a part of Jesus as the Savior of the world, Jesus then indicates the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, his mission on earth was coming to fulfillment. And so I love thinking about that. I love, love, love thinking about that. 
you know, these, these uh, uh, Jewish followers of Jesus that we would see uh, even, even after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and yet these, these Gentiles able to come to Jesus, not having been Jews, not having been God's chosen people historically, but the, now the whole world able to come to Jesus, indicating that his time had now come. Verse 24, truly, truly, I say to you, such important passage here, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit, indicating that his death is good, that his death will, will, will be the most effective way to draw people unto him. He says in verse 25, he who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal, indicating there that we give up our lives here and then we get eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there my Savior will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Again, in indication there of his death being this, this, this fulfillment, this, this coming of his kingdom um, and his death being so important. But I also uh, like for us to see the importance of this verse uh, for us as Christ followers today. So often we're unwilling to sacrifice and give of ourselves. We're unwilling to be called foolish and pitiful according to the ways of this world. But it's in that sacrifice, it's in that death to self that we bear fruit for the kingdom. Okay, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. What an important passage for us to realize. Verse 27. Jesus says, Now my soul has become troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Just the precious words of Jesus here, and how he was the Son of Man, yet also the Son of God. He had feelings. He, he, he suffered pain. Uh, he often grew weary and tired uh, from, from, his, from his work. And so we see his humanity here. Father, shall I say, save me from this hour? But then we see the love of God and the love of, of his children take over. It's for this very purpose I have come. And I too think that as we strive to fulfill our purpose as Christ's followers, we will endure pain and suffering and hardship. In fact, we will even welcome it because we know that it is uh, for the glory and magnification of God. He says, Father, glorify your name. You see, there it is. Glorify your name. Then a voice came out of heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. This, this voice of approval, this voice of assurance from God Almighty. Listen to how the crowd understood that. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying that it had thundered. Others were saying an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice has not come for my sake, but for your sake. How cool is that? Um, I, there's so much I think about here. You know, we're going to get to see uh, Jesus crying in the wilderness. And I, I, I've made a point before, and this was very impactful. This has stuck with me uh, personally. But I made a point before how, you know, what, what would keep a father from answering the cry of his child? And, and in, in, in the case where we see Jesus crying and pleading and showing his humanity, you know, uh, God uh, suffered that he die. Uh, because of his great love for us. And so isn't that neat how we see that here, right? Uh, we see that, that, that God reassures Jesus uh, that his name will be glorified, and not even for the sake of Jesus, but for, the, for, but for our sake, for the sake of those around. Um, it is good that God is glorified. Um, share, share that thought with me. Perhaps say that uh, in, 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 in private time today or even now. It is good that God is glorified. And so we keep reading, verse 31, Now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of the world will be cast out. Okay, judgment has come. Um, again, judgment according to the, to, the, to the plumb line of Jesus, if you will, to borrow from the language of the prophets. And so, and the ruler of the world, his standard will, 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 will not hold. His standard is crooked, if you will. And so, uh, again, love this language here. Uh, the ruler of the world will be cast out, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. Again, speaking of how he will die, but he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. The crowd then answered him, We have heard out of the law that the Christ is to remain forever, and how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? And so, a little bit of confusion there. Again, just like our mind today, we're often... 
uh, torn between uh, what what is entirely physical and what is spiritual and, and, and the blend of the two. So Jesus tries to explain. Jesus said to them, for a little while longer, the Son of Man is among you. Okay, listen. All right, um, they, they have these ideas of, of, of kingdom on earth, um, so to speak. Jesus tries to explain for just a little while longer the, the light is among you. Walk while you have the light so that the darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become sons of light. Jesus is indicating here of the importance of the now, the importance of of, of of this moment to pay attention to listen to follow to learn from Jesus while he is with them these things Jesus spoke and he went away and hid himself from them okay it's, that, that kind of made me laugh a little bit just reading over it earlier you know Jesus saying um, follow uh, me follow the light and then he goes away and he hides again uh, not 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 anything that 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 was not with them in mind but just the importance of paying attention to his words um, paying attention to, to, to his leadership, to his ministry. Verse 37, But though he had performed so many signs before them, yet they were not believing in him. And an indication there that, you know, whether it's signs or whether it's words, if we have a heart that is hardened, we won't believe. And Listen to how uh, the prophecies are spoken of here. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this reason they could not believe. For Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and he has hardened their heart so that they would not see me with their eyes and perceive with their heart and be converted and I heal them. These things Isaiah said because he saw his glory and he spoke of him. Again, uh, the glory of God in, in, in the coming of the Savior, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so verses like that um, still in, 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 in some ways confound and perhaps even confuse me. But, but I tell you, a study and a belief in God's sovereignty is what has given me so much peace in these verses. You know, God is sovereign. He does know all things. Yet I still, uh, in, in his sovereignty, believe that, 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 that we have uh, the ability here and now to choose whether or not Jesus will be the Savior, the Lord of our life. And so... Uh, his sovereignty and our free will aren't something that I think have to be opposed to one another. Um, I often say that I think Paul felt the same way uh, in reading of Romans, specifically uh, chapters 8 through 11. If you'd ever like to sit and study and talk about that, even with me. Um, but, but again, verses that don't confuse me so much as they um, uh, help me rely on the sovereignty of God. And so let's look at verse 42 and we'll wrap up here. Um, getting a little bit of rain rain falling, but it is still a peaceful and very beautiful morning. 42, Nevertheless, many even of the rulers believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they were not confessing him for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. And that's, a, again, a, a sad testament to those who want to follow but are too attached to their life. We saw a little bit of that back in John 9 when, um, when the, the uh, man who was uh, healed uh, from being born blind was healed and um, and was kicked out of the synagogue and so verse 43 they love the approval of men rather than the approval of God let that not be uh, the story of our life 44 Jesus cried out and said he who believes in me he who believes in me does not believe in me but in him who sent me and he who sees me sees the one who sent me I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my sayings and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come into the world to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me does not receive and does not receive my sayings has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him in the last day. For I did not speak on my own initiative, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. I know, what his, I know that his commandment is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. Again, um, I think about how so often 
uh, the Pharisees really, really stepped up wanting to kill, wanting to hurt Jesus when he identified himself in connection with Father God. And uh, notice how, um, you know, here, here um, things are getting very serious, yet Jesus is not backing down. Jesus is once again saying uh, that he is the Son of God, that he is uh, bringing the message of God, the light of God. And uh, as, we, as we close, as I am getting wet, uh, I pray that we have that boldness to do the same. What's coming up uh, is some of my, my most favorite passages in all of Scripture, John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And so I can't wait to study those with you. Uh, thank you always uh, for joining in. This cat has wanted so badly to be seen on camera. There you go, buddy. You see what's up? All right. See you guys next time.